So up until now, we've really been only dealing with outputs of our Arduino, outputting information uh, in the form of electricity and all that other fun stuff. Uh, today we're going to look at a little bit more, or another functionality, and that's the inputs. And the inputs are generally sensors or some type of other thing, usually generally just some type of sensor or electric circuit. All right, so we're going to look how, look how we can get inputs, look how we can actually see what the Arduino can see, and communicate back and forth through the Arduino. All right. So we're not going to be using the same lights hooked up. So you can go ahead and unhook all the lights and all the resistors with the exception of one, with the exception of one light. And then we're going to be using uh, an analog sensor, I believe. So we're going to be doing two different things. We're going to be using an analog read. So we're actually going to be using the analog pins this time. We're going to be using serial print and even a digital read. Well, we might get the digital read. I don't know yet. We're going to find out. Find out. So while you're getting everything unhooked, unhooked, in your little kit, you have what's called a LDR or a photo cell. Now, this is a LDR is a light dependent resistor. And what it, well, it, the amount of resistance it has depends on the amount of light is hitting it. Um, who can tell me why without me telling them? Why do you think light what has made it possible for us to have a light-dependent resistor? There's a particular name and or equation I'm looking for. Mm. <laughs> because science it doesn't necessarily absorb photons. Um, yeah, to some extent, it probably does, but but not not quite what I'm looking for. Um, well, there's this guy way back when, in about 1927 or 19, 1905. Um, yeah, well, at the time, he had really normal hair, but his hair kind of grew crazy after that. Um, it was Einstein. And Einstein came up with what's called the photovoltaic effect. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the circuit I want y'all to hook up. Here's the circuit I want y'all to start hooking up. This is the 10K, resist 10K resistor right here. And this time we are using this power rail. So this 5 volts here, we are going to be using that 5 volt. So the ground should already be hooked up. But the power rail should also be hooked up this time. And you can put it on either side. Um... You're actually pretty close there. It's not the right equation, but it is a photovoltaic equation, Mr. David. Um, where is it? There it is. So what the photovoltaic effect is, is now it wasn't completely done by Einstein. Right? He gets too much credit for a lot of stuff. It was uh, Hertz had something to do with it, Johnson, Malikin, and a few other people. Uh, Hertz was actually the first guy who noticed it. And what it is, is saying that when light hits a certain type of metal, right, when light hits a certain type of metal, it actually bounces, it actually shoots an electron off of that metal, right, or a certain amount of electrons off of that metal. And this, yeah, and every metal will have different work functions in which it's able to shoot metal off of or shoot electrons off of. But in generally, all metals do this. It depends on how much light you shine at them or how much energy the light has. Um, this is actually the, the, the equation right here. Uh, kinetic energy, which is energy of motion, equals Planck constant F minus F naught, or the frequency minus the frequency, uh, final frequency minus the initial frequency, which gets to be all kind of complicated when you put in the work function here and all this other fun stuff. But this is the photovoltaic. This is what Einstein got his Nobel Prize off of. He didn't get it for relativity or E equals MC squared. He got it for this simple equation right here. All right, so this is the circuit I want you to hook up. 
This is a 10K ohm resistor, and they got the wrong color code here, but you should have it listed. Make a little note here. All right, raise your hands when you think you have that circuit hooked up. And let me know if you need help hooking that circuit up. So notice here that one side of the LDR is hooked up to power, and the other side is hooked up to where this resistor is meeting. Now, for this circuit, you don't, you know, the, the legs of the LDR, they don't have to be so close together. You can spread them out a little bit uh, on your actual circuits. Jaden, did you get, um, is your Arduino working yet, sir? Get the heck on it. I'm not sure how this is going to work out on 123CAD, but all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. I can't do it this class, Jaden, but next class, can you stay over and we can see if we can't at least figure something out? I just can't do it this week, but I can do or I can't do it this class, but if you want to stay over after class next week, we'll we'll try to figure something else out. Try to get yours working. The only thing I don't have working yet, and I don't like that. Yeah, raise your hands when you think you have it hooked up. Let me know if you need any help hooking it up. I'm, I'm still holding up, Zach. I, I know the circuit takes a little bit. Yeah, 10K resistor. You should have one in your in a separate bag. It should be even listed 10K ohms. It's um brown, black, orange, gold. Oh, actually, that is the right one. Yeah, brown, black, orange, gold. Squiggly line thing, yep. Where do I find that squiggly line thing? Oh, that's the LDR. That should be in your kit. It's kind of small, but it's in there. Yeah, that's the LDR. Now that LED is hooked up exactly the same way we, we've always been doing it. There, there's no difference there. The only main difference here is how we're hooking up that um, the LDR, which is a new sensor, and the power line. And do try to spread out the, the LDR up here and the LED down here somewhere because later on we're going to put something in the middle. No, this one's still the, um, the 330. They're not both. 10K. This one is 330 or whatever that one is.
Mr. Kevin has it. Awesome. David has it. Cool. All right. We're getting there. Just notice something else is missing here. Oh wait, no, it's not. It's there. It just looks weird. Don't forget about this wire here. That the wire that's going into A zero here of the Arduino is plugged into the same port where you have the LDR and the resistor are meeting. All right, where the LDR and the resistor are meeting, that's where this one here is plugged into. So it really wouldn't matter if you're you plugging the ground and the power here. Yeah. It should be in the bag of trinkets that you have, like where the speaker is and stuff like that. You have a little baggie with the um with the with a bunch of different stuff in there, like uh why well, just call them by their actual names, but you don't know what they are. Um it should be in the bag that you gave. Yep, in the bag with the motor. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I dumped all my stuff out almost as soon as I got it. Down at the game. Oh crap. Is email Manuel Zach, y'all have yours? It actually looks like probably I think it looks more like this one right here, Gabe. Right here. They're not quite this big. It's probably around this size here. For the light, um, Jaden is um, 330. Cool. Gabe found it. Yeah, it is kind of small. It is kind of small for Manuel and Zach. Actually, I'm slacking over here. I'm not even hooking up my circuit yet. There. This one. I'll tell you, I'll plug it into plug nine. Alright. Cool. Thank you, Gabe. Manual Zach. Did y'all find it yet? Okay, cool. All right. No worries. If you've already got it set up, you can go ahead and plug up your Arduino and open up uh, open up the software. Light might be blinking because you still have some code on it. We're going to change that here in a minute.
How you coming, Zach? So I can keep the circuit up and do the code here. I'm just going to kind of uh, put the like the code over here. So first, um, first, first thing I want to do is all right. So I know I have a LDR on there, which is a light dependent resistor. Now, what I've actually set up, or what you've actually set up, is you have a resistor here and a resistor here. So essentially what you have is what's called a voltage divider. So despite the fact that this is an LVR, right? So I have a resistor here. I have a node here, which is, which is this location. This here is the node. And I have another resistor here that's going to ground. And this is my VCC or... Uh, volt collection point or battery or whatever you want to call it. All right. And then here, this here is actually going to our Arduino. Now, what's hap or what's going to happen here is, uh, how is it set up? This is the voltage. This is the LDR right here. The one I'm circling is the LDR. I think it, I think the symbol works like this here. So as the light changes here, right, the resistance value changes as well. Now as the resistance value changes here, the actual voltage here is going to change. Because if I just had a static resistor or a resistor of a certain value there and a resistor of a certain value here, I will be stuck reading the exact same voltage right here or the exact same signal because they're both of them are static. Now here with the LVR, what we're going to be doing is this is actually a light dependent. So it's dependent on the amount of light that it's actually getting, which thereby actually going to make this voltage down here at the R, uh, at the R change. And this is all just, um, uh, K, uh, not KVL. This is just Ohm's law, basic Ohm's law. I've talked to y'all a little bit about that. D e equals IR. So in this case, the amperage in this circuit will stay pretty much the same. There's going to be a slight change in, in it. Uh, depends on how you want to look at it. Actually, the amperage changes. For right now, I'm going to say that the amperage does not change, but it actually does change. But the amperage does not change. Only the resistance value changes. Therefore, the voltage drop plus, whoops, plus, Minus, that's a plus, sorry. And this is voltage drop will constantly be changing based off the light is getting. All right, so let's stop talking about it and start trying to do it and see what happens here. Now, we are going to be using the analog input here, but we're not going to see it right off the bat. Let's just get this code set up first. All right, so we're going to do void setup. And I'm going to go ahead and type out my void loop down here. All right, so there's my bare minimum code. So here I need to set up, whoops, pin mode A0. You don't technically need the A there, or it needs to be capital A if I do use it. A0 and input. Instead of output, we've only been dealing with output, so here we're gonna start using inputs. All right, so I have, I just set up pin mode and I made that A0, which is this one here, it's gonna be an input. That's the first step. And then Manuel, Zach, how y'all coming? Do y'all have the? Um, I forgot, Jaden. Um, 
I think. J Nash, what we're doing after Arduinos. Uh, I had a thermodynamics test today, Jaden. I forgot. I don't really know. My brain is fried, so I will get back to you on that one. I'm sorry, dude. I don't remember right now. Ugh. But I think I did really good on my test. So, mm. all right. Uh, void loop input, and then write out the code. I put the code up here. Hopefully, Manuel and Zach, you have it already, or you have the circuit looked up. And then we do, and I'm setting up an integer of LDR equals analog read. Whoops, and I got to spell read right. Analog read. Analog read should turn orange. All right, and that's our code. Once you're done, go ahead and upload, uh, upload it to your Arduino. If your light's flashing, it should stop. And give me a raise your hands when you have all that done. And then I'll explain the code and all that stuff. Jaden, I'm not sure how you're going to change the light on your LDR and your circuit. That's going to be, I'm, I'm going to, I might even make you a presenter so I can see your screen. I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Manuel, Zach, how y'all coming? Haven't seen y'all saying it's up. Did y'all get the circuit hooked up at least? Cool. Thank you, Manuel. Now, if you got this uploaded, well, pretty much your Arduino, you... Yep, no lights are flashing. That's what I was about to say. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening that you can see. All right, so the Arduino is actually, if you, as long as you didn't get any compiling errors, your Arduino is actually doing exactly what you told it to do right now. But nothing is actually happening, or we can't see anything happening, right? So that's what the next command or next part of this is all about. It's about learning how to see what your Arduino sees, all right? And how to make it see what you wanted to see. So here we're going to use what's called a serial print or serial communication, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and this will allow the, the, us, to view, us, the users, to view the data that the Arduino is pro uh, processing. Uh, this is just like brain surgery. We're going to go inside and look at what the actual Arduino can see. Um, this is a great thing for troubleshooting. I don't know why they put informal troubleshooting, but it, it, it's just... <laughs> It's a, it's a troubleshooting method. Uh, it's something that we, uh, or something I do a lot when I'm when I'm doing not even Arduino code, but when I'm doing regular codes too. I'll put print functions in there, uh, print functions in there to, to try to figure out what's going on. I don't know why your adrenal Arduino buzz, but hopefully you didn't mess anything up. Are your lights still on, Gabe? On your Arduino, you still have to. Green light shining. That, the LED should not be shining yet. All right. To do that, we're going to use what's called serial begin here. And this is in our void setup. So this actually, this is a, just a special function that allows me to start serial communication. That's all it is. Now, the, the 9600 is what's called the baud rate. Majority of the time, 
depending on what you're doing, you will always use 9600. The baud rate is dependent on what type of sensor and how your code is structured. I'm not going to go into any detail and try to explain the baud rate, because then I have to explain frequency and bait and all that other fun stuff, and I don't want to do that. But that's really complicated. And then, so I put the serial begin here in 9600, or serial dot begin 9600 in my void setup. So I'll tell it to start, um, to start communicating with serial communication, but I haven't told it to communicate anything. So I'm going to come down here and actually start telling it to do stuff. And come down here, type out serial.print. Now the LN here, this LN, so serial.print works, and then serial.print LN. That's the difference between you. So every time it prints out this line, it starts a new line. It's like hitting enter. LDR, enter, or semicolon. Upload it. Now, once you get this code, you're still not going to see anything happen on your Arduino. But if you hit this little magnifying glass up here on your serial monitor, you should get something like this. A bunch of numbers scrolling really fast down the uh, down your screen. All right, let me know if you do not see the numbers or if your circuit's not hooked up right and then we'll have to change something else. Might just send me something. What is it? No, nope, nobody sent me anything. Oh, interesting. All right, raise your hands when you have that. All right, I'm, I'm here in a few minutes, Jay. I'm gonna, I want to see your screen. I got to do a few other things first. Zach, the lost Zach, that's what happened. Now, as this sets, right, as this is sitting right now, this is kind of difficult to read and see these numbers. All right, so here we're going to change change a little bit, change a few things around. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add this here, then I'll add the next part. Is I'm going to add a delay down here, and not too much, maybe uh, delay it by 50, somewhere around there. So I'm delaying it by 50 milliseconds. Now when I see it, uh, maybe 50, maybe, maybe 150 milliseconds would be better. All right, give me one sec, Zach. All right. So here's mine set up now. Now, this is dependent, in one second, I see the comments there. Uh, this is dependent on the light in your room or wherever you're at or wherever you're located. All right, so it's going to be subjective. You might not see the same numbers I'm having because we don't have the same light in the same room. I have fluorescent lights, and you might have halogen lights or, or whatever. So the numbers might be slightly different. It's just very subjective because light is, you know, subjective, depending on how much light you have. Now, here, what I'm going to do on my screen right now is I'm just going to take my hand very slowly and wave it over the LDR, and we should see those numbers change. So now my hand's almost, I don't know, a few inches above the LDR. And you see I jumped from four or 700 to roughly 400. Now it's off, now it's on. Off, on. So 
you can hopefully see now that the light is changing the value of the resistance. But it's actually what it's doing is changing the value of the voltage. All right, so that number that you're reading, the analog is actually a voltage signal. All right. Um, all right, so I got a few people having issues. Zach was first. All right, what's going on with yours, Zach? Zach, speak. All right, just go ahead and send me your code, Manuel, so I can look at the error. Well, it depends on that the light's changing while you're not doing anything. It should stay roughly around the same. Just send me a bunch of numbers. Dad, dumb it, Gabe. Don't do that, Gabe. All right. What's your error? Right there is your error. You didn't spell LDR. You got lowercase L right here, Manuel. That should be all of your case. And this should be a dot instead of a comma. And this should be a dot instead of a comma. Dot. And then that should check out. One or two is fine, but when you put your hand over it, Zach, does it drop down by, like, by, by about 100? All right, cool. Then yours is working right. What kind of numbers was Gabe getting? Since he sent me all of them. What did you do? Gabe, let me see your code. Something's not right. All right, is everybody else getting numbers going across the screen? Okay, that's right. I think you just copy and paste the numbers over and over again. All right. So now we're actually reading a some type of sensor input. All right. We're, we're, we have a sensor. It's a light sensor. And hopefully you're seeing numbers change as you uh, go around. Now, if, I take, if you take a uh, phone out or something and put that phone directly over with the flashlight, you should see that those numbers jump up. Like a, probably by a lot. With my flashlight, there it is. So here, now I'm gonna put a light directly over it, and you see my my numbers jump up close to the thousands. All right, and that's gonna depend on how you have it. Um, does it collect energy? Uh, it does not collect. It more dissipates it. Because when you're shining that light on there, you're shooting electrons out to Bangladesh or, or Neptune or somewhere. And that's changing the, the kind of the structure. So there's like a that there's little squiggly lines, that's like a catamine sulfate, something or other. I don't remember the actual chemical composition of it. Um, but when you shine a light on there, I'm actually shooting electrons off of it. 
and thereby um, changing the changing the material structure of it. Now, as soon as you stop shooting light, those electrons go back, and everything gets hunky dory, and it goes back to equilibrium. But it does not collect energy. It can collect energy. That's kind of a tough question, uh, Gabe. It can collect energy. That is a thing that these things can do. Uh, it takes a little bit of tweaking. You have to switch the circuit up and add a battery and a capacitor and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure that they can collect energy. Um, all right. So we got that. Hopefully everybody has that and your sensors are reading and you get numbers, some type of numbers. Now, remember, the numbers are subjective. Can they power themselves from my flashlight? Let me put it, let me put this one cannot, no, this one cannot by itself because the only thing that's really changing is the resistance of it. Um, Gabe's asking about the, can they power themselves from my flashlight or the sun? This concept that we're using, the photovoltaic effect, it is is the is how solar panels are powered, All right? That is the photovoltaic effect is the basis behind solar powers. Is that you? Yeah, I mean the, this particular device, no, it cannot because you need a little bit more complex uh, chemical interactions and circuitry. But can the same principle be applied to collecting energy? Yes, it already is in, in solar pan panels and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. Yep. Hopefully everybody figured out the serial monitor. Okay. It works, but incredibly fast. We need to make it, or we might have made it a little bit slower by adding that delay. But also, by adding the delay, it doesn't really tell us all too much. Now, one little thing, or one thing is like, every time you use the serial print, you do slow down your code by a fraction. Uh, so if you actually get into more precise coding, and you're using a serial print troubleshoot, which is fine. But to actually run it at full capacity, you need to do what's called commenting out the serial print. So the, uh, so the Arduino will run at its full capacity because it takes a, a split micro millisecond something to take this information to print it out onto the... Uh, onto the serial monitor. So here, we're gonna make this hopefully look a little bit cleaner. All right, hopefully a little bit cleaner. And right above where you put that first serial print in your void loop, I want you to put in that next line there. Now, here we're just inputting a string value and that LVR equals, that is just a string, there's nothing fancy about it, right? And this is just so I can label the value of LDR. This here, this LDR, I can make it say whatever I want to here. I can make it say photo cell. Um, I can make it say Jaden cell, whatever I want to. It doesn't matter here. All right, as long as I'm in those quotation marks, it's going to put out whatever I want to. And I, I just remember what I want to do with Jaden. So give me one second, man. Um, upload this up. Did I answer your question, Gabe, about the energy and stuff? Did that make sense? Okay. So now it's just printing out LDR equals LDR. Now, notice the difference between the serial print and the serial print line. So when it comes here, it prints out everything, including that space. That space is there. And then it prints out LDR and then like hits enter and does it all over again. It made more than I probably would have gotten. Okay. Now Jaden, I'm gonna see your screen, sir, so you're you're getting promoted. Why everybody else is doing that. Let me see your screen, Mr. Jaden. All right, so, yep, you're stuck with getting 54. You have your circuit hooked up, right? Looks like you do. Can't tell. Too bad um, just didn't have a touch screen. What's that? 
It'd be cool if I had a touch screen. You could put your finger over it and darken it. Oh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, circuits hooked up, right? Go to your, uh, go to your component list. Like, add a new component. Is there any type of, uh, let's scroll down a little bit. That'll also keep scrolling. Uh, go all components. Scroll down. See, there's like a light, anything other than an LED. Uh, multimeter, yeah, it's just RGB LED. Slide switch, tiny servo. Huh. How can I make that light change? What? I don't really know, but I know the person to ask. Uh, it'll be over early. Photo cell. Photo cell and 23B. Yeah, we do have a uh, RGB with this with this kit. All right, what is this? IR LED photo cell. That is not a photo cell. Ah, I like people sometimes. No solar tracker. Devonin, that's not it. Chemical engineering lab. Yeah, I'm going to get your Arduino fixed, man. <laughs> so you can actually get some real values there. All right. Did your dad try putting in that password, Jaden? It just didn't work, or what happened? Well, he hasn't done it yet because I've been really busy this week. I just don't have time. I've been doing a lot of stuff this week. Oh, uh, well, I understand that. All right. Come back up here. All right, Jaden, remember, you're going to be in a different category now, so you want to let me know through a different chat function and communicate with me differently. All right. All right, so what was I going to do? I don't remember. All right. So right now we just have values going across the screen. We haven't really interacted with the light or anything like that. All right, so let's... I'm not going, we're not going to do digital read right now. Ignore that. Don't do that. Come. There you go. So, this is the new code. Don't worry about the button part here. Don't worry about this stuff. Don't worry about this at all. I just want you to type in this if statement here. Exactly. So now this number 200 here is subjective. All right. That is subjective to the values that you are getting. All right. So you might need to change it from 200 to, I don't know, 850. I, don't, I just made up a number off of my head. I don't know if that's accurate. Keep the old code. This is, this is still the same code, the exact same code. Um, and yeah, we are going to save this code. Make sure you save this code at the class. Uh, what am I missing here? Oh, I know what is missing. So you might do int LED equals pin 9, I believe. Yep, pin 9. And one second. <laughs> All right, my partners have a little bit of issues. And if I load this up, this should work. Let's see. Oh, 
anything else we got. Put in the output up there. Sorry about that. And then that should work. Oh, who did I lose? Got Zach, Manuel. I lost. Nope, Jaden. He's on the other side. All right, I didn't lose Jaden. Jaden, you're stuck using 54, man, so I can get your Arizona fix next, next week. And there you go. Essentially, you have just made a nightlight, hopefully. Again, the numbers are subjective. You want to pick a new number here, but let me know if you have any issues. I'm going to change mine to 350. But what you're actually doing, though, all right, so this isn't just a little nightlight. What, what you're actually doing is you're taking in a sensor input and you're controlling some type of output. All right, that is the main type now. So the only thing we've really been doing, the only thing you really do in other type of Arduino classes is you just do outputs and it's kind of a annoying stuff that you never really learned how to do anything, do anything cool, right? And as I mentioned before, the LED is a um, good indicator for an output because, well, it lights up, right? So what we're doing is we're taking in a sensor data and then we are interacting with it through a computer to to make it output something. In this case, we're... Actually, I just thought about this. If you want to put this... I see your thing, Gabe. If you want to put this in perspective, what we're doing is we're using Einstein's photovoltaic effect that he came up with, which led to his Nobel Peace Prize, we're inputting into an Arduino, and we're outputting the information to an LED, so we're smashing atoms together and all that other fun stuff. So we're inputting Einstein, and we're outputting nuclear smashing. Not quite fission, but nuclear subatomic smashing, quantum effect. Quantum mechanics, there you go. That's, where I was, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, expected... Initializer before int, unqualified or before if. Looks like you didn't put a semicolon somewhere. Okay, let me see your code. All right, raise your hands when you have it working, but that the light turns on and off. Um, okay. Then you just put, you did put, Int LED equals nine. You just put. Looks like you put LED equals nine. Oh, there we go. All right, I only got one hand up here. Is everybody having issues here that you're not telling me about? Yeah, you did define LED, Gabe. So you need to actually define LED. And we'll define it up here as int. And I could put it up top too. I just thought it would be more sense here. LED equals 9. Like that. That should compile. I, I see your comment there, Zach. Hang on one second, sir. Yep, that's all you're missing, Gabe. Uh, this is supposed to go off immediately after you take your hand away from the sensor. Yeah, pretty much. Depending on the value you set here, depending on that value you set here, but yeah, if LDR is less than this number, it should go high, and then if it's anything other than that number or, or higher than that number, it should immediately go low-ish. It's not going to be immediate, immediate, but it, it should be pretty close. It depends on how much of a delay you have down here. Zach. And you're not like, if you, 
I mean, it should be pretty quick. It's not instantaneous. But here, I'm just, like, taking my hand over and... Yeah, should be pretty quick. All right. Let me... So, what's supposed to be happening right now? A few different things should be happening. You should... One... Be getting information from your serial, serial monitor of LVR, right? And then as you put your hand over it, you see that that number changes. Now, you can see mine, when I put my hand over it, I get down to below, roughly right above 300, right? So what I did was I set up this if statement here with this value of less than 350, and the light should turn on, and then the light should turn off. Don't forget about this little pin mode output thing up here. Don't forget that. Is that not what you're seeing, Mr. Manuel? Okay, cool. All right, make sure you save this code into a location where you can find it. And we'll call it um, input. Save it as inputs. I'm going to save mine because I'm going to need this one. Uh, desktop. Call this input. Uh, input underscore 17 alright alright if you cannot get it to turn off means you probably don't have this else statement here or your your something's wrong here in your let me see your code Zach let's just simplify thing let me see your code oh never mind you got it alright Kevin I'm not seeing your hand up Jaden, I know you you can't necessarily partake. Actually, Jaden, what about um earlier next week? Can you can you show up earlier next week? That way we can hopefully try to get it fixed um before class starts. You can actually unmute yourself too, Jaden. You're not in the you're in a different list, so you can unmute yourself. Which is why I really let Gabe be an organizer. <laughs> All right, remember, Manuel, Zach, are y'all how y'all coming? Raise your hands if you if you got that working. Okay. But yeah, Jane. Jane. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you um, come early? How early? Like how early? Like six thirty? Yeah, like thirty. All right. All right, cool. I'll try to remember it. I'll be here, to, and we'll try to get you set up. All right. So here we, we, we started the foundation, and again, save this code, save this code, save this code, and keep a circuit hooked up. All right, we started the foundation for you to be able to take in some type of input and take it to an output. Now, Again, we just used a LED or we just made a very, we spent an hour making a nightlight. But this, um, uh, this concept, this output, that can be anything from a servo to a motor to um, the head of the Terminator or 
or Wally's uh, Wally's tracks on his wheels. This is any type of output you want it to be, depending on how you control the circuit. So in this case, you know, we're just doing something. <laughs> uh, do you not know what Wally is, really? Or the output, or in this case, we could be smashing atoms or smashing electrons into protons using Einstein's photovoltaic effect. All right, so when you go and tell people about this class, tell them you're, you're using Einstein to smash protons and electrons into each other, all right? That's the main part. Think you know that, um, David? Yeah, I'm not going to repeat what you said, Gabe, but there's ways around that problem. I think you already know the answer. <laughs> Science, is <laughs> Science is generally cooler than movies, yes. Um, are you still grounded, Gabe? Did I give you this yet? Or I'll give everybody this. This is actually one of my favorite podcasts. If you really do like what we're talking about, there's a lot more of it right there. All right. Um, I don't want to get into this button switch. This button gets to be a little bit complicated. Um. It's not complicated, just the button you have is a really piece of crap. It's a hard to hook into uh, hard to hook into the breadboard. So I'm gonna save that for next class and then we'll tie everything in, to, in together. Uh, any final questions for me? Does anybody not got their circuit hooked up or working? I really want this one to work because this is the the fundamentals of, of if you want to do any type of real robotics work, this is the fundamental of it. Oh, wait, why is yours not? Hang on one second, Manuel. I'll be right back. Program. <laughs> All right. Uh, Manuel, why is yours not working? Is your light not turning on? Are you getting the serial print? That's going to be the first thing. Are you getting this information? Okay. So if you're not getting anything there, Mr. Manuel, it means you probably don't have that, your LDR hooked up right. So... Here, you can actually leave your Arduino plugged in for this, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the way I have mine set up, all right? So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and unplug your entire LDR circuit. All right. So, nope, just manual. Just manual. All right. Manuel, do you have this, this power wire hooked up here, this one here? The five volts going in. Okay. So I want you to take one leg of that LDR of, of this thing here, the LDR, and I want you to plug that in to um I want you to plug one leg of that LDR somewhere on the power rail for 
Or actually, wait, let me, let me backtrack. I'm sorry. Don't do that yet. I want you to take one leg of that LDR, plugging it into B4. Actually, let's make it a little bit higher. B7, B7, or C7. C7. I know I'm talking around myself. One leg of that LDR to C7, the other leg into the power rail of your breadboard. All right, let me know when you have that. Take care, Jaden. We will be doing another circuit. This is not for that. This is uh, Mr. Manuel's not his circuit's not working right. I'm trying to get him straight. All right. So Mr. Manuel, one leg should be plugged into B seven. Another leg should be plugged into the power rail. Let me know when you have that. Take care, Andrew. Take care, Zach. See you Wednesday, y'all. Gabe, talk to me, or not Gabe, Manuel, talk to me. You got that LDR hooked in? Oh, you, you do. Never mind. I'm sorry. I didn't see where you said that. All right. So take one leg of that resistor, plugging it into, let's go with A7. One leg into A7. The other leg into ground. The other leg goes into ground. 